everyone. I've got a really messy topic of conversation today, uh, and that is giving each other grace. So I'm just off a phone call with a very dear friend of mine and a colleague who had been on a summit um, for yoga teachers looking to work in a more trauma-informed way. Um, and one of the conversations that had come up was around uh, neurodivergence and how do we craft an offering for people who um, are maybe coming into this yoga space of uh, um, with with different perspectives, different um, different mental capabilities, different physical capabilities. That was the nature of the conversation, right? And the specific the specific that cropped up was that. Um, one of the participants in this forum had been really quite forthright in putting forward their opinion that um, yoga teachers shouldn't be distinguishing between left and right sides of the body because that may be inaccessible for some people. Um, this person had accessibility in their job title. Um, you know, there was, a, there was a level of credibility that goes with that. And before you dismiss, before you dismiss that yoga teachers should or shouldn't have the, the ability to mention the left or the right hand side of the body before you dismiss this person as any number of things, um, before you dismiss this conversation as not critical, I want you to start to think about how often this comes up for us in our space. So this particular person has a very strong belief that if you, when you're teaching yoga, are mentioning the left and the right hand sides of the body, that is going to necessitate that you make it inaccessible to a group of people who maybe don't identify with left and right sides, maybe missing limbs, um, you know, potentially have some stuff going on um, that means that, that it's just not workable for them. And so the conversation, the really messy conversation that we got into, um, and we actually thought that we just probably need to do a whole podcast on this, so watch out for that one. But the, the messy conversation we got into was how do we absolutely make space for and acknowledge that person's experience, um, that voice in the room, speaking for a group of people who may not be in the room, um, and and how do we work through that conversation? And so unfortunately, the way that this had presented in this particular conversation was, hey, this is wrong, but no ongoing conversation about how to do better. And so we talked, my colleague and I had talked about, like, what are those ground rules around when stuff like this comes up? Because this pattern is emergent in our businesses as well. It's the same pattern as when we dismiss a colleague for bringing up a particular idea in a brainstorming session that is unworkable, unfeasible, you know, whatever, whatever the reason. Um, it's the same behavior pattern that says, you know, we're having a conversation about how to reduce costs and somebody has put forward an idea or a particular perspective and you dismiss it. It's, that, it's the same pattern, right? So just because it's showing up over here in this yoga teaching context, doesn't mean that that same pattern isn't showing up in our business as well. And my colleague and I had a lot of conversation about grace and about giving each other grace. And the fact that that goes both ways. So we've got a lot of big meaty conversations on the table at the moment. We have global pandemics, we have climate crisis, we have massive interracial relations conversations going on today. I don't know whether I'm getting older, but it feels like these are big, meaty conversations and they're complex and they're intertwined and there's more of them than at any point that I certainly remember. Uh, and and so we, we talked about, as you, as you go through trying to work your way through and navigate through these big, complex, meaty issues, and as you're trying to navigate through different people's experiences and that fear that goes along with saying anything because anything you say will be wrong in another person's perspective, as you start to navigate all of that, what we came back to is the core fundamental principle around we have to give each other grace. And so that might look like when something is thrown at me in the middle of a yoga summit and I'm not quite prepared for it, being able to say, hey, I absolutely hear what you've said and acknowledge what you've said and it's, this is actually a new space for me. It's either something I haven't considered before, um, maybe it's something that I haven't put due diligence to, but to actually respect that opinion, I need to do the due diligence and the time around actually thinking through that for myself. And that's not going to happen in the next three seconds when I give you an answer. And so in the interim, here's where I'm at. 
and and that grace, that asking for grace to be able to say, hey, look, I hear what you've said. I can't quite process that in the moment, but give me some grace and some time and, and let's come back to that and let's rework that and let, let's let's help work through what that looks like for me, for you, for these things. So there's this element of, of asking for grace. And we talked about it going both ways. So both the, the giving of grace when somebody says, you know, I, I have this thing going on and you don't have the, the response, giving them grace that that is their experience, that is their reality, that's that potentially that's their baby project that they've just put forward and you're about to shoot it down. <laughs> so that giving of grace around understanding and acknowledging people's perspectives and experiences, that receiving of grace and that I may not have dealt with this thing before, but I actually need to kind of spend some time to work through that and work out what it looks like for me. And then equally, I think that extends to how do we have that conversation? And so one of the things I've always been a fan of is if that is your experience, help me understand what good would look like for you. Like, what would the words, what would the scenarios, what would the activity, what's, what does it look like to you for us to have a good outcome coming from your perspective? Because it's not a perspective that I'm familiar with or attuned to or have had a lot of exposure to potentially. So that questioning around Help me understand what good looks like from your perspective because you've told me what bad looks like. <laughs> Help me understand what good looks like. And again, that extended grace around have this conversation with me. Help me to navigate through. And in asking for that, I'm not asking for you to give me the answer. I'm not asking for you to, um, to, to come up with all of those, those answers for me. But I need to actually start to think through these ideas and have a conversation to feel my way through and start to gather some information so that I can put my own opinion together. And so that extended grace period around grace for the messy conversation. And I think those were the those were the two kind of takeaways that uh, my colleague and I were having this chat this morning. And, and I just thought, how applicable is that in business when we're talking about new projects, when we're talking about investments decisions, when we're talking about anything that's going on in the office, how often do we have that opportunity to give and receive some grace? Um, it's certainly a theme that we work a lot with with uh, the equine leadership part of the retreats course. And, and I've got you in an arena working with horses. They will give you a lot of grace. <laughs> and equally, <clears throat> oftentimes when people are running into problems, it's because they're not giving the horses grace in the sense that maybe we're running to a timeline that these animals just don't have that same timeline in their heads about achieving a particular outcome. And actually, if we took the time to slow down and work through slowly and we let go of that commitment to that timeline and that, that need for action, that actually then all of a sudden things start to accelerate. So this theme of grace really sort of hit home this morning around how, how many ways it manifests in our business, how often we have that opportunity where something comes up and we want to jump on it and nail it and and solutionize it um, when somebody raises an idea or a problem or we want to shoot it down in a hurry we want to solve it and move on and we have this bias towards action so we don't want to get caught up in the conversation so much but equally I think we really need to start to acknowledge and to find ways of holding space and giving each other grace because that's part of helping everybody to feel like they've been heard that's part of actually building a stakeholder community where we've got some trust in the environment and we can have these messy conversations and we can put an idea on the table and work through it. Or we can say, I actually don't know what the answer looks like, but let's have a conversation. And so I think the more that we can start to do this type of work in our meetings as well, the better those overall outcomes are going to be because we're starting to lay the foundation around ground rules. We're starting to lay that almost that unspoken foundation around these are the things that we value in the organization. This is the way that we want to operate. And part of that is giving each other grace so that if we landed with an idea, we have the ability to go back and sort of think through and, and maybe revisit in a couple of weeks once it's had time to land and settle without dismissing it immediately because it doesn't fit within our current construct. Equally, when we throw something out there, giving people enough grace to say, hey, I don't actually understand or can you help me work through that on a deeper level? even though my opinion might differ to yours, and to work through some of that stuff around well, what does it look like so that we're spending less time arguing for and against and more time in exploring that idea together and seeking to understand. Giving people grace ties into that idea of let's seek first to understand. 
to give each other enough grace and enough space that we can start to come together and understand these things and give ourselves some time for it to settle. So that was what I wanted to share this week. It's the concept of giving people grace. And for those of you that want to get more into it, um, I can assure you that Amanda and I are going to get very much into it into a, pod, into a podcast episode shortly. So keep an eye out for that one. Uh, and, and yeah, we're going to talk through some of the really messy stuff, not just in a business context, but actually in a being a decent human being context. So I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. Thanks for listening this week and I'll see you again real soon.